even though half of them are covered up. Mm -hmm. It's just good to see faces. So I'm going to ask you to stand with us this morning as we worship together and as we celebrate this morning. of days. I love that. And your kingdom shall not pass away for all eternity. The ancient of days, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the hope of nations and our future, our peace, our joy. Jesus, hope of the nations, Jesus, comfort for all who mourn. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness, Jesus, truth in each circumstance. You are the source of heaven's light on earth. In history, you lived and died. You broke the chains. You rose to life. You are the hope living in us. You are the rock in whom we trust. You are the light shining for all the world to see. You rose from the dead, conquering fear, our Prince of Peace, drawing a sneer. Jesus, our hope, living for all. Lord, 
like we live in times right now where we really, really, really need Jesus, huh? And I feel like we're living in a time right now where people are are just so desperate that they, they're coming up with anything to try to solve the world's problems. But we know, we know the answer is Jesus Christ, and it is our responsibility to let the world know that that is the real answer to the situation. So.
praise be to our God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we take a moment and say hi to one another? And here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to make eye contact with people. Pull your mask down so they can see your face and see your smile. And then you can put your mask back up again. So take a moment. Make eye contact. Uh, there's uh, some Bible studies that are happening, and if you are interested um, in, a la in a lady's Bible study, you should talk to Sue. Do you want to say something? Yes, I do. Well, then say it. Okay, so yeah, feel free to come and be a part of that. On Fridays, you said? Yeah. Fridays. Fridays? Am I not on? I am there. Am my mic too low? Am I good? Okay. Um, other announcements. There's going to be a, a guys, a men's, well, there's some discipleship stuff, which Dan could talk about, but he's not here. Um, but there's also, I'm going to be starting our, our men's Bible study that I've been leading. We're going to start that up in a couple weeks, so... If you're interested in being a part of that for the summer, let me know. Also, uh, my family, well, my wife and I are, are going on vacation this week. So uh, if, thanks, thanks, Garrett. Is that, you're happy for us or you're glad that we're leaving? Okay, good, good. I actually, I, right, right, I, so if, uh, if you need anything, please contact one of the elders. I was sharing with uh, my wife yesterday that I had, I had sent an email out to the elders with your permission. I'd like to take next week off. And they very enthusiastically said yes. I'm not really sure how to take that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that they're, they're thinking, yeah, good. I'm, it's either that they want me out of Dodge because I've been a grouch or that uh, they're excited for us to get away for a little bit. So... We will be gone next week, and we're kind of excited about that. So please pray for safe travels for us as we do that. Is there anything else we need? Oh, Wes. Um, Wes, who's been doing an awesome job with all our video stuff, is not going to be here next Sunday. So he needs someone to run the video stuff for next week. Now, don't be intimidated by all that technology back there, okay? Wes is so smart that he makes it really simple for you. So if somebody is interested in running video next week, please see Wes after service. And we really do need somebody to do that for next Sunday so that the rest of our church family who's not here, who's watching services at home, will still be able to see our service next week. So please talk to Wes afterwards. Um, it's really, is, is it really hard to do, Wes? Five buttons. Five buttons. Wow, five whole buttons. Yes, it's just like the soundboard, Ben, right? Just five buttons on the soundboard? Yeah, right. Okay, so, so please see Wes after the service, and uh, we're going to receive our offering this morning. Did I forget something? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, sure. Uh,
will be our son on Thursday. Awesome. So please be. So please be praying for the Leslies and for, for Melvin. Is he going to change his name to Melvin Leslie? He's just going to be Melvin Paz Leslie. Oh, cool. Melvin Paz Leslie. Cool. Cool. All right. Anything else that I forgot this morning? All right. I'm going to ask Sean to, to come and ask you to join me in prayer as we receive our offering this morning. Father, we thank you that uh, we, even though we live in a world that seems to be full of turmoil right now, that you are still sovereign. And you are still in control. And there are times that I admit that I wonder what you're up to, God. But we trust in you because you are God and you are the one who brings peace. You are the one who brings joy. You are the one who brings life and hope. So we praise you and we give you honor and glory for who you are, Lord. We also thank you, Lord, that you provide us with the things that we need to do the things that you call us to do. And we praise you that you also give us an opportunity to be involved in the things that you accomplish in this world, that you use us to share the message of, of the gospel, that you use us to advance your kingdom. And I pray, Lord, that as we take this offering today and we give a portion back to you, we recognize that everything comes from you, God. And we ask that you would bless this offering that you would use it for your glory to advance your kingdom here in our community and to the very ends of the earth. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand with us, if you will, as we continue to worship this morning. And I have to share with you, I'm really excited to share the message that I'm going to be sharing with you today. And I just pray that as we, as we sing these next couple songs that you would take time to focus your hearts and just prepare your heart for what God has uh, to say to us this morning. There's no 
nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. I taste it and see of the sweetest of loves. Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come fly. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. The Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory. presence this morning and we declare your Holy Spirit that dwells and reigns within us we declare that you are welcome we declare that you are the one who guides and directs and leads us and we give you honor this morning as we worship the poor and powerless 
And all the lost and lonely And all the thieves will come confess And know that you are holy Know that you are holy. And all will sing out hallelujah, and we will cry out to our content and all who feel unworthy all who heard with nothing left will know that you are holy and
May we proclaim your awesomeness, your mightiness. And may we say without reservation, without fear, without shame, that Jesus, you are Lord. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Our salvation, our Redeemer, our anchor, our cornerstone, our rock, our future, our hope, our peace. We thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege of worshiping you. We thank you also that we have the honor of, of spending time in your word. Lord, we pray today that as we do that, that you would speak to us, that you would give us direction and that you would lead us, change us, whatever you need to do, Lord, that we may know you, serve you, and glorify you more. We ask in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Well, as I, I shared with you this morning already, I'm very excited to bring this message to you today. And it's, uh, it's titled, Be Light. And we are in Ephesians chapter 5. We're continuing our series on Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. And we're going to be looking at verses 6 through 14 this morning. Now remember where we were, were a couple weeks ago in Ephesians. Paul calls us to follow God's example and follow God's example in love and to love others like Christ. Paul went on to say that there are certain things that have no place in the body of Christ. Certain behaviors. And we talked about how looking at life through the lens of Christ makes all the difference. So now we're going to continue this morning. There's an outline in your bulletin uh, to follow along. And the first uh, idea this morning is this idea. is this idea of do not be fooled. How many people like to be fooled? I think it was Mark Twain who said, it's easier to fool someone than it is to convince them that they were fooled. Chew on that for a moment. Okay, don't be fooled. Look at verses uh, 6 and 7, if you will, please. And, and I have to pause for a moment. Do we have the bulletins? Does anybody? It's the wrong insert. Well, we have the wrong bulletins out. They're in the office. Yeah, this is June 7th. Well, it's not June 7th. Okay. Um, so, I'll speak real slow until the outlines get here. Okay, so here it is. The idea is this, don't be fooled. Look at verses 6 and 7 with me, if you will. And it says, don't be fooled by those who try to excuse their sins. For the terrible anger of God comes upon all those who disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do. Now, Paul says that we should not be deceived. We should not be fooled. Now, Understand this, friends, those are not empty words. Paul says that we should uh, not be involved with things that these people do. And he's talking about people who are non-believers. And he says that they will try to excuse their sins. Well, well what sins are, are, are Paul talking about here? Well, if we rewind a little bit and we go back to verse 5, which we read the last time, it says, You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is really an idolater, 
who worships the things of this word of this world. So Paul's talking about these ideas of immoral, impure, greedy actions that people do. And, and Paul says, people are going to try ways to justify those. But here's the thing, friends. We need to understand this. We need to take seriously God's view on sin. Let me say that again. We need to take seriously God's view on sin. I have heard people talk about uh, things in the Old Testament. For example, when uh, Israel defeated uh, Jericho, they marched around the city and the walls fell down and everything, and it was awesome, and they saw God do great things. And then they went to their next battle and they got defeated. And they found out the reason was there was somebody in, in Israel's camp who had sinned and disobeyed God's orders not to take anything from Jericho. And when you look at it, when they find that out, what do they do to him? They kill him and his family. And they burn everything he owns. And we go, wow, that's harsh. Why would God do that? Well, friends, I believe God does do... I believe God did that, and he does other things you'll see, especially in the Old Testament, to help us to understand how serious God's view of sin is. Now, in light of that, understand this, that people will fill your ears with things that sound good, but are just not true. And people will justify sin in many different ways. All kinds of ways. Well, I'm not as bad as that person. Well, this really isn't a bad thing. Well, this really isn't wrong. But as we look through life through the lens of Jesus Christ, we know better. We are called to be imitators of God, not doers of evil. And if we are objects of God's love, then we can't become partners with those who are objects of God's wrath. Let me say that again. If we are objects of God's love, then we can't become partners with those who are objects of God's wrath. Look what uh, Jesus says, or this is actually what, uh, yeah, what Jesus said in John. He said this, there is no judgment awaiting those who trust him. But those who do not trust him have already been judged for not believing in the only Son of God. Their judgment is based on this fact. The light from heaven came into the world, but they loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. They hate the light because they want to sin in the darkness. They stay away from the light for fear that their sins will be exposed and they will be punished. But those who do what is right come to the light gladly so everyone can see that they are doing what God wants. So, we read that. What should we do? I'm so glad you asked. We should embrace the light. Look what it says in the next verse in Ephesians. It says, For though your hearts were once full of darkness, now you are full of light from the Lord, and your behavior should show it. Paul tells the church in Ephesus, and this is true for us as well, we are no longer part of the darkness, friends. Paul says we are full of light. And friends, light represents truth. Dark represents absence of truth. And those who live in darkness do not have the truth. We have been rescued from the darkness through Jesus Christ. In John chapter 8, Jesus said this. He said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't be stumbling through the darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. The way we live should reflect that light. Remember what Jesus also said. He said this, You are the light of the world, like a city on a mountain glowing in the night for all to see. Don't hide. Don't hide your light under a basket. Instead, put it on a stand and let it shine for all. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. We are that light, friends. We are that light that shines in the darkness. So, let's talk about shining the light, shall we? Can we talk about that? Whoops. I missed where I'm at. Hmm, okay. We're going to talk about shining the light. And what does it say here? Uh-oh. Wow, I messed up. 
Yeah, Pastor Greg needs a vacation. <laughs> well, let's find out what I put in here. Oh, okay, very good. Yes, you're seeing Pastor Greg in a terrible moment. Okay, shining the light. This is what it says. It says, take no part in the worthless deeds. I'm in verses... Uh, uh, 9 and 10, I believe here, or actually 11, verse 11 through 13. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, rebuke and expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that the ungodly people do in secret. But when the light shines on them, it becomes clear how evil these things are. Now see, Paul goes on a little further now, and he says that as Christians, we should take no part in the evil deeds of the darkness. He says that their deeds are worthless. Other translations say that they are fruitless or unfruitful. They have no value. They have no benefit. And when we live as children of light, we expose the deeds of darkness. Did you hear what I said? Now get this, because this is where we're going the rest of the time. When we live as children of light, we expose the deeds of darkness. So as we live in light, we reflect the character of God and those who are living in darkness will have their sin exposed. Truth will reveal falsehood. Now, listen carefully, friends. This is where I believe the church has failed. This is where I believe the church has failed, not just in a few years, but for many years. For too long, the church has lived by proclamation and not demonstration. You see, friends, we spend too much time pointing fingers instead of being the hands of the body of Christ. And as a result, the church has been seen as judgmental and hypercritical. It is not our job to point at the world and say, Sinner! It is the job of the Holy Spirit to convict others of their sin. It's not ours. Let the Holy Spirit convict through our actions instead of us trying to convict through our words. Do you hear me, friends? I know Paul uses the word rebuke here. Oh, I'll go back, I'm sorry. Paul says, rebuke and expose them. Well, he's not talking about the people. He's talking about the action. He's talking about the sin. We are called to rebuke the action, not the person. Let the light of Christ shine through us so that he may bring light to the darkness through us. We're kind of like God's flashlights, you know? Why do you carry a flashlight? To expose truth, right? You're in a dark room. You take a flashlight and you want to know what's there. When the light's off, your mind does incredible things, doesn't it? Did you ever watch a movie or it's a scary movie? And, and do you ever watch a movie and just shout at the TV? Will you turn on the lights for crying out loud? It's a simple thing. Click. Right? What, well, Carl? Yeah, turn the lights on. What, what's the problem here? Bing, truth. You can see everything and exactly what's going on. We are God's flashlights. We are God, God uses us to shine light into the darkness. You see, friends, the definition of darkness is actually the absence of light. That is the definition of darkness. The absence of light. And when we shine light into the darkness, truth is exposed. So often, evil can masquerade itself as many different things. But once the truth is exposed, it will be seen for what it really is, friends. We as the church have to do a much better job of demonstrating as opposed to proclamating. If somebody is lost and is in a sinful life, and they don't know Christ, and they're totally lost. It is our job not to say, you're totally lost. 
it is our job to shine the light for them so that they can see truth. Do you understand? Do you understand? We need to open their eyes and their hearts to the truth of Jesus Christ. Paul got, just got done in Ephesians saying that we need to imitate the character of God. And the number one thing he talked about was God's love. So we are to imitate God's love. And we imitate God's love by helping people to see people who are lost in the darkness, to give them light, to show them truth. When you walk in a dark room, you spend a lot of time stumbling around, don't you? Why? Because you can't see what's really there. And there are so many people in this world who cannot see what is really there, who cannot see Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, they see God as somebody who is uh, judgmental instead of someone, and someone who is critical, instead of someone who loves them. When we shine the light of Christ, we are sharing the love of Christ. Why is this so important, friends? Look at verse 14. Look what Paul says, says here. He says, and where your light shines, it will expose their evil deeds. And this is why it says what? Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Friends, we are to shine the light of Christ so that those who don't know Jesus can be saved. When I'm sharing the gospel with someone, I always try to communicate to them, this is too important for me not to share with you. I want you to know the truth. I want you to know that you have a Savior who loves you in a way that you can't even begin to comprehend right now. I want you to step out of the darkness and step into the light. Because the truth is, friends, Jesus is coming. We know that his return is imminent. What does that mean? It could be any time. Could be any time. Let me leave you with Paul's words to the Romans. Look what Paul says. He says this. Night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So don't live in darkness. Get rid of your evil deeds. Shed them like dirty clothes. And clothe yourselves with the armor of right living as those who live in the light. Paul is saying, look what he says, clothe yourselves with armor of right living as those who do live in the light. The Lord is trying to communicate his truth through us. I, I still can't figure that out sometimes because we don't seem like very good vessels for the message, do we? But the truth is our own brokenness makes us perfect vessels because if God can love me, he can love anyone. So friends, we need to be light. Light that shines in the darkness. And friends, our world is full of darkness. Full of darkness. And we need to be the light and the love of Jesus Christ. And shine that light so that others may see, know, learn, and embrace the truth. Amen? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you allow us to play a part in your mission and ministry, that we get to be a part of advancing your kingdom. And Lord, it's still hard for me to get my head around that, but we see this constantly in your word. We see it in uh, Paul's letters, and we see this exhortation for us to be light. Lord, may we take that seriously, and may we be your light for your glory, Lord so that others may see your truth and see it through us, so that they may come to know you as Savior and Lord. 
As we go this morning, Lord, we pray that you would guide and direct our steps. May we go in the strong name of Jesus Christ, guided, directed, and empowered by your Holy Spirit, carrying your light and your message of love to all the world so that people may come to know you as Savior and Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day.